We've got the refreshed BMW X5 and how about this green? All right, this is one of our favorites. <laughs> oh man. What a terrific engine. It really is one of the best in the business and they never abandoned the inline six no. cylinder. BMW stuck with it. So what's under the hood of this thing? We've got the 40i. It's got a three liter turbocharged inline six with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. It has an eight speed automatic transmission with 375 horsepower and 383 pound feet of torque. It gets more power than the previous model at 40 horsepower and 51 pound feet of torque. To every tank of premium fuel, you'll get 882 kilometers, 548 miles. There's a plug-in model called the X550E with more power and range now. It has a turbocharged inline six cylinder with an electric motor, a combined 483 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque and up to 64 kilometers or 40 miles of EV range. The previous plug-in had 42 kilometers or 26 miles of range. And then there's the M60i with a twin turbo 4.4 liter V8 and a 48 volt mild hybrid system, 523 horsepower and 553 pound feet of torque. The X5 is standard all wheel drive in Canada, but in the US there is a rear wheel drive option for the 40i. Okay, let's get into what are the key standard features. The base trim comes with a 14.9 inch touchscreen with iDrive 8, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a 12.3 inch digital driver display, Sensafin leatherette upholstery, heated power front seats with driver seat memory, heated sport leather steering wheel, ambient lighting, a panoramic sunroof, remote engine start, and 20 inch all season run flat tires. They changed the center here with the so shifter. Weird. You can still put it in different things. What are we going to put it in? Got to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe, but also follow on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's going on behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto. And if you want to help the channel, you can hit that like button. Well, it's interesting, we drove the updated Porsche Cayenne, very conservative changes on the outside. The GLE, they're not messing with that. And this one is a mild facelift. What other changes did they make to it? There are some substantial changes, especially to the interior, but you're right, Zach, not a ton with the exterior. You get a new kidney grill, slimmer headlights, new tail lights in the back. They've updated the engines. The 50E plug-in hybrid replaces the 45E, so you've got more power and more range now. But really, it's the interior. It is very tech forward. You've got iDrive 8 technology, and there are more standard features now available on the X5. Another big change is the third row is gone. It is no longer an option for 2024. Yeah, so these are big money makers for these German brands, the X5, the GLE, and the Cayenne. Yeah. So they don't mess with them too much, and they kind of stay the course with styling. I really like how this handles. It's refined, yet still has a sporty feel to it. The steering is connected. It's precise. I mean, it's everything that you would want from a BMW, but the suspension is definitely softer in this model, as is the steering. I do find when you put it in sport mode, it gets a little bit bouncy. Yeah, I find the difference between comfort and sport quite marked when you put it in sport, you, yeah. you bounce. It's kind of an interesting sensation. Yeah. We've been saying for years, if you're looking at any BMW, you want to try it with, say, sport package without sport package, mm -hmm. with different size wheels. This one's on 22 inch wheels. Yeah. I think it would be a different characteristic if it was on 20 for example, with a little bit more sidewall on the tire. Mm -hmm. But uh, please, especially with BMWs, you really have to try them with a different combination. These are run flat tires. Uh, the 22 inch is definitely not for me. I can hear the tires. I would like to try 21 inch and if it's still not what I like, I would go down to 20 inch, although I think the 22 inch looks hot. 
The 40i has available four wheel steering. I'm not sure I would even get that. The maneuverability of this model is very good. We don't have four wheel steering in the test model. It also has available air suspension. And then of course the M suspension as well, which would give you a firmer ride. It's a bit bouncy in sport mode, mm -hmm. but you just get around that by leaving it in comfort. And then you, with the individual settings, you can make the engine and the steering more lively and just leave the suspension uh, as it is. Uh, the thing is, Andrea, that these vehicles have all gotten softer over the years. Yeah. That's just a trend. This gets 8.7 inches of ground clearance. It comes standard with LED headlights, LED tail lights. I like the look of the new tail lights in the back. I think that they look sharp. I like the changes that BMW has made to this exterior. It gets standard 20 inch wheels, but available 21 and 22 inch. Then there's the M Sport package, which adds all the M specific goodies like the blacked out roof rails, gloss black exterior accents. You can also take it up to the M Sport Pro package. That adds a matte black kidney grille, black chrome tailpipe, and M Sport brakes with red or blue calipers. I like what BMW has done with the interior. These screens are standard, a 14.9 inch touchscreen and a 12.3 inch digital driver display. What I like is that you don't have to use it as a touchscreen if you don't want to. You've got the dial at the center console, which makes it very intuitive to use. So that's what I was getting at with these are major money makers for BMW. Yeah. The rest of the uh, other vehicles in this class, the same thing. They're not changing it too much where everything's in the screen because they don't want to alienate potential buyers. And I think this is a fantastic halfway measure, yeah. bigger screen, still the eye drive, still some buttons and switches. There's still a volume knob. Yeah. Well done. I think that the comfort level in here is excellent. I like the seating position. There's plenty of support for long drives. BMW has gone from Sensitech to Sensafin. What's that? Yes. Am I sitting a, on sense of fit? You are. It's a leatherette interior, but boy, what an improvement. Yeah. I have to give BMW credit. I don't really love Sensitech. I don't really like Vernasca. So this is a big improvement. In fact, Zach thought maybe it was leather. Yeah, I mean, the new batch of synthetic interior materials for the seats is really quite good. Mm -hmm. We're seeing uh, something similar by the Hyundai uh, group. They, yeah. they use this kind of material. I would be perfectly happy with this because it's going to look good for years. Yeah. It won't crack or fade. And then there's some other nice materials like on the side of the tunnel here. It's padded yeah. and uh, excellent wood trim that goes from dark to light. It's a gradient open poor wood that's really it's not gaudy wood it's no. tasteful wood and i like that and it's only 500 dollars canadian extra it keeps you away from any sort of piano black oh, yeah. in here there's very little only a tiny bit at the center console you'll notice there's a new toggle shifter here do i love it nah. ah. All right. Uh, I would prefer <laughs> it's better the regular than, shifter it's better in the than previous the Porsche X5. one. Yes. It's better than the Porsche one. Yes. Now that one is really weird. There is available merino leather with plenty of color options. You know what? You just have to go through the a la carte menu. There is plenty to make this X5 your own. You can add packages to get extra features like comfort access, ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, heated and cooled cup holders, a wireless charger, head-up display, the Harman Kardon sound system, an available Bowers and Wilkins diamond surround system, and the Sky Lounge panoramic sunroof. Well, Andrea touched on it already. There is no third row available any longer. You got to go and spend and get the X7. Yeah. The back seat, however, is very roomy, lots of leg room, plenty of headroom. Uh, the seats are comfortable. They don't recline, which is funny. And the cushion on the bottom is nice and soft. Comparing the X5 to other competitors like the Mercedes-Benz GLE and Audi Q7, the X5 offers 39.8 inches of front row legroom, which is half an inch less than the GLE and almost two inches less than the Q7. Rear seat legroom at 37.4 inches is over an inch less than the Audi and over three inches less than the GLE. 
and then you lift the tailgate. And this is still a unique offering in this class of vehicle. It has the clamshell design where the bottom lifts up and then you get a little tailgate that folds down. You get plenty of cargo space. There is no spare tire, but there is extra room under the floor. Space behind the second row at 33.1 cubic feet is about the same as the GLE, but a little less than the Q7. Overall cargo space at 71.2 cubic feet is good and more than the Q7, but less than the GLE. Oh, you got questions. Let's get into it. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. As you know, the Cayenne was recently given a significant facelift along with an equally significant price increase. How does this refresh X5, especially with the first ever M Sport Pro package, compare to the latest Cayenne? Both have always been sporty, performance-oriented midsize SUVs, but the price has certainly climbed with the Cayenne. I guess, did they just do the whole thing? I know, it's very good. It's very good. You're All right. bang on. All right, what I think is if you're going base model to base model, yep. X5 all day long. Yeah. This inline six cylinder on paper, similar kind of horsepower, the V6 and the Cayenne is okay, mm -hmm. but this is just an absolute champ. Uh, the Mercedes inline six is very good as mm -hmm. well. When you go up into the higher performance models, the new V8 and the Cayenne S, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, we really enjoy driving it for sure. I I love the exterior design of the Cayenne. I think Porsche did a really so great job. I wonder why, Andrea. Maybe you should come clean <laughs> on that. Um, but the interior is not my favorite. No. There's a lot of piano black. I don't like the toggle shifter. It's not at the center console anymore. It's just not my favorite and I don't find it intuitive to use. So I think performance wise, they're both terrific. Mm -hmm. I like them a lot. But they've each but gotten softer over the generations. They really have. Like um, yes. uh, the difference from ours to the current one, the current one is way softer and this is softer. The original X5 we had, mm -hmm. this is how it went down the road. <laughs> I hated it. That it was, was like two, an apple cart. That was a 2005 model, and I really loved that. I like that kind of feel, that kind of drive. This and is... that's one of the reasons why I like the 2016 Cayenne, is that the suspension is a little bit firmer. You definitely feel those bumps in the road. And these models, even the steering's lighter. They are just softer. How does this compare to the Range Rover Sport? Boy, mm. you guys are just asking those great questions today. The Range Rover Sport, I think, is is kind of tied with this in terms of um, really nailed it with mm -hmm. great exterior, wonderful interior, fantastic drive. Mm -hmm. It's a really good product. Yeah, I would say that the Range Rover is also softer. The suspension is not as firm as what it used to be, which we all know is going to appeal to more people, especially on those longer road trips. Very comfortable just like this and the Cayenne. But the Range Rover is expensive. It starts at over $108,000 Canadian. Mm. So you had but asked it, further about the interior as well. Like you feel like this is more of a Michael Kors interior and the Range <laughs> Rover is, is what? more high end. Oh. I can't remember what he said. Louis Vuitton? Let me see if he said Louis The other Vuitton. thing is that the, uh, the, Range Rover, the Range Rover Sports comes with more power, right? A yeah. lot more power as standard equipment, which is why they obviously justify that price. And I think that the Range Rover does have a beautiful interior. Mm -hmm. You are right about that. It comes standard with a leather interior. Don't get me started on this. We already discussed it when we talked about trims. I still think this should come standard for $86,000 Canadian with a leather interior. Considering the size and weight of this vehicle, the fuel economy of the 40i is quite respectable. How much of an improvement is there over the previous model and why do you think they prefer the mild hybrid system over a full hybrid system like Toyota uses? Oh wait, just before you give the official numbers, mm -hmm. the inline six cylinder engine that BMW has been perfecting for many, many decades. If you drive reasonably, you can get very good fuel economy out of these engines. Yeah. Okay, what are the numbers? So between this model and the last model, there's a slight improvement. Remember this 40i already had a 48 volt mild hybrid system. BMW has just improved on it. So it does better um, two miles per gallon city lot. highway. Yeah. Both of them are each two miles per gallon. 
And liters per 100 kilometers in the city, it's 1.3 liters per 100 kilometers improvement, and then 0 0.6 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway improvement. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? Too bad about getting rid of the third row option. I'd consider an X5 with it, not for daily use, but wouldn't make the leap to an X7. Well, you could go for the X7 if you have 20,000 extra to spend, yep. plus options. Uh, that is obviously a standard three row SUV. It's interesting they got rid of this. A couple of other vehicles that pop to mind is the Genesis GV80 is available with an optional third row of seats. And one that nobody thinks about, Andrea, mm -hmm. is the MDX, the Acura yeah. MDX Type S yeah. with air suspension, big ass brakes, and a wonderful handling vehicle. That's mm -hmm. something people don't consider. And I also think the Audi Q7 is just a great option and it's priced quite well. It's got a great starting price, even for the six cylinder engine. I just think that when you move up to something like the X7, not only is it more expensive, but it does change the driving dynamics because it's a larger vehicle. It has a proper third row. Whereas this X5, you got the option. It was a tiny third row, best for small children, and used and in mother -in -laws. a mother-in-laws. <laughs> and used in a pinch. So I think you still got the great handling X5 without you know moving up to such a large vehicle like the X7. All right, let's get into the vital stats of this vehicle. The fuel economy for such a big luxury vehicle is actually pretty incredible. Let's start with pricing. We'll do Canada first and then move on to the US. The X-Drive 40i starts at $86,000. Price is tested $96,500 Canadian. In the U.S., the rear-wheel drive 40i starts at just over $65,000, and the all-wheel drive model, $67,500. Here's the fuel economy for the base gas engine. 10.1 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 8.7 on the highway. That's 23 miles per gallon city, 27 miles per gallon highway. If you get the plug-in version, you get a combined 4 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers, and that's 59 miles per gallon equivalent. When the battery is depleted, you get a combined 10.6 liters per 100 kilometers or 22 miles per gallon. The warranty is 4 years, 80,000 kilometers or 50,000 miles. So you want to have a luxury mid-size SUV. What else can you buy? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Porsche Cayenne with a 3-liter turbocharged V6, 348 horsepower, and a starting price just under $90,000. The Mercedes-Benz GLE 450 with a 3-liter inline 6-cylinder turbo and a mild hybrid, 375 horsepower, and a starting price just over $90,000. The Audi Q7 with a 3-liter turbocharged V6, 335 horsepower, and a starting price of $79,000. The Genesis GV80 with a twin-turbo 3.5-liter V6, 375 horsepower, and a starting price of $83,000. So there are four luxury SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round. Two things we like, two things we like to see improved. Love the performance this X5 offers. I love they didn't mess too much with the interior. You know, although I like Sensifin, I still think at this price point it should come standard with leather. I would like the sport suspension not to be as bouncy. The best thing about this X5 is that inline six. Man, these things are getting expensive. 